Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the tools you need to create a Google Street View virtual tour. So to create Google Street View virtual tours, you're gonna need some hardware. Now, you have multiple options. You can rent hardware, you can find someone who already has the hardware, but it's good to know and talk the language, the lingo, because you put your hands on and touched and at least played around with proper hardware to create 360 images and therefore 360 virtual tours that you can also place on Google Street View. Okay, so let's start from the ground, from the bottom. You need a camera stand of some kind. Now, most camera stands are not the typical 360 stand. What you need is what's called a monopod. A monopod is essentially a very thin camera stand that uh, projects upwards and has a heavier base on the bottom. So it doesn't uh, kind of balance on that tripod type but, uh, wide stance. And the reason why that is, is because the stand will appear in the photos if you're not careful. So you wanna avoid the stand being in the photos, okay? Really big deal. So the best way to do that, so you can research monopods. Or be like me, and I actually originally had a mic stand that I converted that could handle a camera uh, on top. It's had a little uh, conversion kit and it was easier to plug in and it was heavy on the bottom because it was a mic stand. Um, and it was an easy uh, use case for walking around and capturing 360 photos. So once you have your stand, uh, you can now get the capture device, the camera, or you can capture it with an iPhone. So let's talk about the iPhone first and how you can easily convert your iPhone into a 360 camera. So essentially you can use what's called a rotator kit. Um, Cloud Panda provides these. You can place your phone into the rotator kit. Make sure you place a fisheye lens onto the capture lens. And what you can do is go into the Cloud Panda mobile app, uh, select your capture a mechanism to be mobile phone, tap the button to get started and press start on that little rotator kit and it will rotate around in 360 and stitch the photos together that it captures into a two to one ratio equitangular image, which is just a 360 photo. Now, there can be at times some stitching errors or some small little things that um, can come up from capturing with just your mobile device. You don't have as much control of the image. I mean, and if you really want to get pro level and do a lot of fancy things, you're going to have to upgrade to a 360 camera. So you basically, rather than converting a phone, which is meant to be a phone into a 360 camera, we get a 360 camera to shoot 360 photos. Okay. Um, and of course, a, a level above that, maybe a little bit more old school is a is DSLR camera with a fisheye lens. Um, you know, that's also an option and your highest resolution option, but we're gonna talk about some of the hardware 360 camera options now in this section of the series. So um, real quick, I wanna just uh, show some examples. So this right here in my hand is a Ricoh Theta Z1 camera. It has two lenses, uh, one on the front, one on the back, and when you capture this in the center of the room, you just set a timer and you go hide for 10 seconds or so, and they will capture a full 360 photo inside the camera. Plus they have some uh, fancy plugins like the dual fisheye plugin where you can capture in nine different brackets and in different exposures in the camera and it will combine those into one file. It's, uh, so there's a lot of things that you can do um, with that camera that are a little bit more advanced. So if you're sourcing a photographer somewhere, make sure they have some experience with the Ricoh Theta Z1 camera. That's your best bet. It's gonna get you going fast when it comes to high resolution photos that don't cost an arm and a leg or require special stitching software. Uh, now, if the photographer you source from, or if you really wanna get fancy, you can learn how to, how to capture 360 with DSLR camera and, and a fisheye lens, 
Um, if a photographer you find shoots in this mechanism and is good at it, and they can show you an example, that's gonna be your best quality, your best bet photo. So if you're gonna pay more for higher resolution and better quality photos, find someone who shoots with a DSLR and can stitch it for you, edit it for you, and send it back to you. That's gonna be their best quality photo. It's gonna make you look really good, and it's gonna obviously um, uh, you know, cost more so that that, that specific skill set uh, every, you know, he'll, he'll make more, he or she'll make more, but, but you'll get this better quality output as well. And there's also an alternative camera that, that exists as well too. So this is called a Truzio Lite 2 camera, I think that's what it's called. Um, and the, what's interesting about it is that it only has one lens. The lens is a little bit smaller, but it has a little motor and it rotates as it captures the photo and stitches it together. It has an 8K output, so pretty nice camera, uh, very interesting. It's a little bit cheaper too, it only has one lens, so it's not, not as expensive. Um, so you can't get as much out of it if you really want to get fancy when it comes to editing or, your, or sending it off to your editor, but it's an option for someone who's just trying to get started and get rolling. Um, so that, that Trizio camera is, is pretty good and it's definitely worth trying out um, as you get experience. So you see a 360 camera, you hear about DSLR shooting, you hear about the app. You know, where do you start? What do you do? Um, when it comes to the hardwares and tools, uh, and I'm gonna discuss some more in a second, but you just wanna keep things simple, right? So if you, if you buy a camera to go test it out and use it, um, then just capture in the ba most basic way possible. Auto HDR is, is, is in here. Just automatically chooses kind of the best settings that are uh, in camera and, and just go shoot and, and see how it looks, put it on your computer, check it out, upload it into Cloud Piano. Same thing with the Trizio camera. If you go out and shoot a virtual tour and it's okay, then, well then, hey, you know how to do it. You've done the experience. You've created a 360 photo. You've downloaded those to your computer. You've uploaded them to Cloud Piano and you know started to use that software and click publish. So keep it simple. Create a virtual tour um, and, and so you can have the experience. Um, and also lastly, if you use your iPhone, keep in mind that um, even with Cloud Piano, you can capture just by freehand. You can use the wide angle lens just inside that's built into the, the, the iPhone camera. Um, but it's not a fisheye lens, so what that means, basically, it's not gonna fully capture that, but you can get a good idea or a feel for how the photo is captured, right? So you just wanna get the experience so that um, when you're sourcing and building your team later, uh, you know what it takes and know how to create one of these 360 experiences or interactive media pieces of content. So that's the hardware you need. You need a stand or a monopod. You need a camera or you see to use the app or an iPhone. You just look, look up Cloud Pano Virtual Tour Creator on the App Store um, to create a, a 360 photo uh, on the on iPhone is for the for the in camera or the or the in phone camera capture mechanism, and then um, and go out there and capture some photos. Uh, I always say, you know, you can buy if you have to. You can buy it for Amazon. Go do your big project, and then ship it back if you have to, right? If you don't want to have a camera sitting around, so you, there's low risk ways to get started. You can rent a hardware piece, a piece from for for three or four days and learn it really fast, right? So. That's how, that's the hardware you need um, to get started. And of course, there'll be other additional things that uh, you will need in the, in the back end as well. So once you capture 360, now what? Now you wanna take those specific photos and um, we want to make them look pretty. So the next steps are gonna be to create your virtual tour. So we'll get into that in the next video. Um, now that you've seen some camera options and examples, you can go out there to your own, um, in your own space, play around, take a, make a virtual tour of, of your own home if you must. And then, uh, and then in the next video, we'll talk about um, software tools and, and what, what to do next. I'll see you there.